thank we thank the Lord for the Sabbath that is just about to end. Yeah. When the sun sets down, uh, we know that uh, we end into the presence of the Lord. Yeah. You know, uh, just uh, before we come to your questions, and then uh, uh, we prepare, we can prepare for the Sabbath. I want to op- you to open the book of Genesis chapter 2. The book of Genesis chapter 2, and uh, I'd like one of you to read verse 1 and verse, verse 1 to 3. Yeah. I read. Yes, right. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were filled. That's one, two, and on the seventh day of God ended his, his work which he had done, and he rested in the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Verse three. Verse three. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. And so when you read Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 to 3, it says one thing that God finished, God ended, and God rested. Yeah. When we come to the Sabbath day, we are not worshiping the Lord, but the God of the Sabbath. And in it, the work of redemption is finished. The end of sin. We have the end of sin because we are in the Lord. And then, actually, we rest in Him. You know, can a person who has not finished work rest? No, you don't rest if you have not finished work. But in the Sabbath, we find that in him we rest because his work. Jesus Christ said on the cross in the book of John, it is finished. Christ working us has to be finished, has to be completed. We have to put an end to sin. And the Sabbath has a double blessing. You know what? When you are in the sanctuary, we are told that the bread was changed every Sabbath. And what is the bread? The word of God. So on the Sabbath, the bread is changed. When the bread, the bread was put on the table, and it was there for the whole week, but on the Sabbath it is changed. So on the Sabbath, the word of God comes to us afresh. He has a new Revelation for us on a Sabbath because the word is changed. The bread is changed every Sabbath. So he brings in something new. That is spiritual healing. But also there is another blessing, the physical resting. You cease from every work and your body recreates it. And so the Sabbath has a double blessing. Spiritual blessing and physical blessing. An end of sin and the healing of everything that is there that uh, uh, we have experienced through the, 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 the week. And so as we approach the Sabbath, uh, I, I want you to know that uh, the Father has done the work of redemption through His Son. And it is the Sabbath that reminds us of that recreation. We fell from the glory of God, but in His Son, the work is completed in us again, and we are assured that again, we can be made whole again. On the Sabbath, He had finished the work, and He looked at everything He had done, and behold, He said, everything was good. When man was created, God used to say everything is good, everything was good, but when man is created, and everything is finished, God says something different. In verse 31, Genesis 1, 31, as we pray. Then God saw everything that he had made. Yes. And indeed it was very 
good. So on the other five days, he creates and says things are good. Things are good. But when he creates man and finishes the work of man, he says it is very good. So God through Christ delights in us very much if we are completed in him, if sin has to be put to an end. And so as we enter into this session of your questions, for like 25 minutes, then five sharp we go to prepare for the Sabbath. Uh, I'd like us to pray, bow down for our Lord of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that uh, we are drawn closer to Thee in this Sabbath. And uh, this day was sanctified, Lord. We know that we can only participate in the blessings of this day. And so I pray that uh, uh, Your very presence may enlighten our life, it may bring a healing both spiritual and physical and we shall give you glory and honor at the, at the end of this Sabbath. Thank you for thy love and thank you for thy mercies for we pray in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Now, you people say that you have questions. We can look at them in brief time, 25 minutes, then we go for the Sabbath. The first question. Uh, it was from me. Yes. Uh, as you, you saw the, the laptop there. Yes. And before we saw the laptop, we had a question. I have my prayer here. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a question that uh, the Bible states mm -hmm. on the book of John, chapter 10, verse 4. 24. The book of John, chapter 10, verse 4. 8. John. I'll be in John. In John, chapter 10, verses 4 to 8. Four to eight. Yeah. Let us look at it. Then. Then four to eight. It says, and when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yeah. Verse eleven. Verse In five. Verse four. Uh, yeah. We are now verse four. Yes. Okay. Verse 5, verse 5. And a stranger will they not follow, but they will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Yeah. Verse 6. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what these things they were which he spake unto them. Verse 7. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Yeah. Verse 8, mm. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Yeah. Verse 9, Verse 8, okay. yeah. Verse eight yeah. All that came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Yeah. That is your fashion. Yes. How does your fashion say? <coughs> Eight. First four. Four says, and when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they so know it is, his voice. It, it is the same. It yeah, is the same. same. That is one thing that I was just questioning myself. He says in first eight. This is who Jesus was just uh, talking with uh, his uh, disciples about the sheep, about or now the thief and the dog. So he says that anyone before me is a thief. Can you open this because? It is a, a question that maybe I, I have been asked with some brethren. Who are this thief? Is the one that we have seen because I know about the I know about the scattering, the second coming of Jesus Christ. I know the one for four or now they will be kept for the for uh, and the great reason or now it will happen. But I have heard that our brother here says that I am the prophet of God. I have come and I want the Dr. Ward to phone me and surrender all what he has done. 
Is this the, the thief that we are just or the prophets who the Bible states that they will come? A good question. Yes. But it says that all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Yeah. What is the context of what Christ is saying? Verse 1 he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door not into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. Yeah. So whoever does not go through the door, the street way, but yeah. climbeth in, uh, climbeth in at some other way, he is a robber. Yeah. The same robber in verse 8. Yeah. So it is a person, Christ said that I am the way, yeah. the truth and life. No one comes to me but through the Father. So if anyone will teach that heaven can be entered through another way and not through the way of Christ, the person is a robber. If anyone comes with a teaching which is not in the Bible because Christ is the door, the way, the truth, and life. Yeah. So, if anyone is not is teaching something that is contrary to what Christ teaches in His Word, he is a Roman thief. Yeah. And it says that uh, in verse eight, all that came before me, the thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Yeah. We are the sheep. Yeah. If we don't hear the voice of truth, we don't follow that person that is claiming to be a sheep. If he is not Talking according to the word of God, the sheep cannot follow him yeah. because they know the voice of the master. Yeah. And the master enters through the door and takes care of the sheep. The shepherd, in fact, he continues and says that, um, uh, verse 12, yeah. but, verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays his life for the sheep. Yeah. Um, but 12, he says, but he that is a hireling, he that is hired, huh? and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf yeah. coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf catches them and scatters them. And so, Jesus Christ, who is the good shepherd, will go all the way with his sheep, with his children. But a person who is just being paid time to take care of a church, when there is a crisis, when there is trouble, Mama, mm -hmm. he runs away and leaves the church. Mm -hmm. Because he was there as just a maid, as a worker. Mm -hmm. But he didn't, he didn't have a calling. Mm -hmm. His life was, he cannot lay down his life for the sheep because he doesn't care. He is hired. Mm -hmm. And this is about the people who enter into the ministry to get tight and money. Mm -hmm. Like, today if I told you, or told anyone, let me not use the example, anyone. Maybe I'll test you. It's not good to test human beings. <laughs> if I say, Mama, live right now, you are going to Lolo to work for the people who are in darkness. If you if you have a calling in the ministry, you will go. Yeah. And you are told, we cannot assure you, brother, of helping you. We are sending you there but God will provide. Yeah. We can't assure you that we have enough money to give you a good life that you may go there and live and work for the Lord. We are sending you there as a missionary. And you know when missionaries were sent, they went in difficult places, they didn't have money and all that. If a person do not have a calling, he will not go, he will start giving excuses. He cannot lay down his life for the ship. Yeah. But if, you, if I tell you or tell somebody here is five million, go and work somewhere for two months, everyone will raise their hand. I'm going. That is a higher I have the, the burden of that place. Yeah, I have the burden of that place. But yeah. actually, your burden is five million. Yeah. Your burden is not the people. And if you go there and the money gets finished in one week, you will tell the people, you, you are I'm going back home. Why are you going, going back home? The money is finished. Yeah. So you understand, all that comes in that way are thieves and robbers. Yeah. They are not ready to lay down their life for the sheep. 
But Christ is talking about a good shepherd. And you know, Christ is not only the good shepherd. He gives us the attributes of being good shepherd. Yeah. He gives us the calling. He tells Peter that, take care of my sheep. Yeah. Take care of my lamb. Take care of the little ones. Yeah. So he was, he, he had the sheep and Peter now is being given the authority or the attributes or the responsibility of being a shepherd. So the chief shepherd is Jesus Christ. But we are also given that duty of a shepherd. Mm -hmm. And how do we know that we have been given a duty? If we press all the way with the sheep, yeah. even amid his troubles. Jesus Christ, you know, in the Garden of Gethsemane, when the cup was in his hand, when all the sins of the world was upon him and he was going to be lost if he didn't go through. He said that if it is your will, let this come. He take an yes. But not according to my will, but according to your will. He submitted. Let me be lost. Let these people be saved. Look at Moses. Moses is a good example of a good shepherd. People may say that Jesus Christ could do that because he was God. But look at Moses. Moses, when he came down, the children of Israel were sacrificing to idol yeah. that Aaron had made. Yeah. And God told Aaron and Moses that I will do away with all these people and make a generation from you. Yeah. And Moses told him, no, that is not going to happen. The people will hear about what you have done and they will say that that God cannot take care of his people. Yeah. Now, God, if you are going to wipe away all these people, start from with me. Take yeah. my name out of the book you have written. Start with me. Don't start with those who have sinned. No. Start with me. Yeah. And that is the position of the shepherd. <coughs> if there is any risk, the danger has to meet him first. He is protecting the sheep. And he tells God, forgive them. Forgive them. And God repented. Or God listened. Or it it actually moved the heart of God. This is a true shepherd. Yeah. You understand now? Yeah. But anyone who cannot lay his life down, he is not a shepherd. He is a hireling and he's a thief and robber. Anyone who says what is not in the Bible is a hireling and a thief. He is in love of money. Do you know this churches Pandambego that read so and you will read. Give a hundred and you will. The pastor said, give a thousand, you'll get two thousand. If you want to be blessed, do this. And the pastor will pray, no, they are hirelings. Yeah. There's nothing like that in the Bible. I, yeah. I think that is enough for the question. Maybe. Yeah. Do you understand now? Any other question? No, I think that the second question is, are you satisfied? I see you are strong. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that one for me. Okay. Do you have a question? Yeah, I'm having just short, short. Thing. Okay, go ahead. On uh, ten commandments. Yes. On the salvation. Yes. So we were asking each other to know more and to know which one comes first. Is it uh, to know the ten commandments and then you get salvation or salvation in the name? You know about. You keep commandments. You keep commandments. That is a good question. Um, I want to take it to I want to refer you to the book of Matthew, looking for a verse, Matthew. First of all, what is it? Do you keep the commandments to be saved? Or you keep the commandments because you are saved? Which one comes first? Salvation or keeping the commandments? 
Now this is what happens. Basically, before I go to the story of Matthew chapter 17, chapter 19. Uh, has anyone of you ever um, kept sheep? Yeah. Yes. Maybe have you ever lost your sheep? Yes. Yes. You, you thought a lot about yes. saying yes. If you have ever kept a sheep, leave alone a goat, a sheep. A sheep, when it is lost, does it come back home? No. No, yes. A sheep never comes back home. It goes away. Away and away from home. We are lost sheep. Satan took us captive. And we cannot return home. How does a sheep return home? The shepherd goes to look for it. And brings it back home. In that state, can you say that a sinner is keeping the commandments? No. No, a sinner is not keeping the commandments. No. You get me? No. You are lost. So, you cannot say that you are saved because you are keeping the commandments at that stage. I want this to be out clearly because there is a lot that we are under grace and not uh, under the law. So, when uh, a sheep is lost, the shepherd goes to look for it. Now Christ is the good shepherd is in heaven. So you, you come to a point, you realize that you are lost, but who tells you you are lost? You you start reflecting about your life. It is the spirit. Yeah. No. Actually, the spirit of Christ convicting you. Actually, this way I'm going. It's not. The way. It's not the way. Yeah. But even in that conviction, you cannot come home by your own strength. You cannot determine the right way. Yeah. So the Holy Spirit starts embracing that. Oh, I'm drinking. I don't think this drinking is good. Maybe even somebody has not preached to you. Maybe you have heard somebody preaching. But you have a conscience that starts telling you. Like, you can start drinking and your health starts being bad. Is it? No one will preach to you that uh, drinking is bad. Your own body will tell you drinking is bad. Because you are healthy, but the body now is giving away. Because of drinking. So that is the conviction of the conscience. The Holy Spirit is telling you, you know what you are doing. Even look at your physical body, it's bad. And then you remember that uh, thou shall not murder. You have a conviction. You are killing yourself. Mm -hmm. And then a thought comes, no, I'm going, I'm killing myself. This is not good. And you hear the voice, or you hear the sermon that actually the Lord has said, thou shall not murder. Through the word, there is a conviction, or through the still voice of the Holy Spirit, your guardian, the guardian angels, everyone has a guardian angel. They are taking care of him, and they are wooing him back to Christ. They are, the angels are there. And so we are lo lost sheep. So now to come to your question, does keeping the commandments come first or salvation? I tell you, when Adam was lost, he didn't keep the commandment to be ex accepted first. What happened? A lamb was provided for his sin. Christ stood in behalf of man and God and said, my blood. So it is the blood of Jesus Christ that covers the sinner who is hardened in sin from dying so that he may work on his heart. Salvation is a free gift, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. You have been saved by grace, not of your works that you should boast. So it is a free gift. But now look here. You have not worked for salvation, okay? And here I am with salvation. Brother Pete, here is salvation, and I come. I have told you this is salvation. The life that you are living is bad. Here is salvation. What have you done? I have received. You have to receive the life. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. That is the salvation you have received. Yeah. And what do you have to do with that salvation? Do you have to play around with it? No. You do what? You keep the salvation. Yeah. And so, when you accept Christ, what is happening inside you will be seen out. Yeah. Like, 
Yeah, you bear the fruit. Yeah. When you plant something, now you are planted in Christ. If you plant maize, what happens? It germinates, yeah. is it? Yeah. With the right conditions, with the right soil, you have to take care of it. Yeah. So you are taking care of your salvation, but it is Christ working in you. And you come up a new person. The life of Christ starts being in you. And the life of Christ is not of breaking the commandment. No. It is of the keeping the commandment. Yeah. So Paul says in Galatians 2.20, I am not the one who live, but who? Jesus. Christ in me who is living. So brother Peter, this is it. Yeah. You, we get salvation as a free gift. But what shows? 2, 20. Galatians 2.20. But what shows that actually we are in Christ, we bear the fruit. And the fruit is keeping the commandments. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And now listen, look at this story of Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. Mama, are you there? <coughs> verse 16 to verse 19. Yes. A man comes to Jesus and asks him a question. Teacher. Teacher. What good thing must I do to get eternal life? What good thing must I do to get what? Verse 17. Why do you ask me about what is good? What, what, what do I have to do with what is good? Why are you asking me that? Jesus Christ, in fact, Jesus Christ is asking the man, what are you asking me? What are, do I have to do with what is good? Continue reading. Jesus replied, Yes. There is only one, one who is good. Yes. If you want to enter, to enter life, keep the commandments. Now, you have received the salvation free. I died for you. But if you want to enter into the kingdom, do what? Keep my commandments. Keep my commandments. And the young man didn't know what are the commandments, maybe. What did he say? Which ones? And he asked him, Master, you are telling me to keep the commandments. Now can you mention some of them? Yeah. And he starts Jesus mentioning. Replied, yes. You shall not murder. Mm -hmm. You shall not commit. Adultery, mm -hmm. you shall not steal, mm -hmm. you shall not give false testimony. 19. Honor your father and mother and love your neighbor as yourself. Which, which are these commandments that he's naming? He's commanding the ten commandments. The, he's mentioning the ten commandments. Yeah. yeah. This is what he's telling them keep the ten commandments. If you will enter into the eternal life, do what? Keep, keep, my, the, keep my commandments. Keep the ten commandments. All he's mentioning are in. Ten Commandments. So Jesus Christ himself says, tells us, if you will enter, I have died for you. You could not die for yourself. But this free gift, it has to have fruits. And what are the fruits? Keep my commandments. If you want to show people you are in me, let me see the fruit. And again, Romans chapter, Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. Verses 8 to 10. It says, Yes. Let you know that remain outstanding, except they, they continue in depth to love one another. Do not have any debt. Peter, you are listening to me. Yeah. Or you are listening to the Bible. Which, which is which? <laughs> Listening to both. Yeah. <laughs> He's saying, do not have a debt. What's your point of debt? Only have a debt of loving each other. Live within your means, brothers and sisters. Don't go about borrowing. Here you have borrowed 20. The other corner you have borrowed 30. The other place you have borrowed 100. No. That is not the way of the Lord. Live within your means. That is what Christ is saying. Do not have debts, but have the debt of loving one another. And he says, whoever, verse 8, you didn't finish? Verse 8, whoever loves others 
has fulfilled them. Whoever loves others have fulfilled, fulfilled all the, the law, the Ten Commandments. Yeah. And so you say, the whole duty of man is love one, one another. One another. Yeah. If you love your neighbor, if you love your neighbor, and starting from your parents, you will honor the commandment number five. You will not commit adultery if you love your neighbor. You will not steal from your neighbor. You will not lie against your neighbor. And you will not covet or be jealous of the things he has. Yeah. Love your neighbor. You have fulfilled all commandments. The law. And verse 9, Mama. Verse 9, the commandments. The commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. Yes. You shall not steal. Uh -huh. You shall not covet. Yes. And whatever other commandments. Command. And whatever other commandments there may be. Yes. There may be. And some of in this one. Command. All the commandments are summarized in this commandment. Love, love one another. Verse 10. Verse 10. Love, love does not turn to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Love is the fulfillment of the If you love God, commandment number one, you shall not have any other God. Amen. You will not bow down to any creature, commandment number two. Yeah. Number three, you will not use the name of God in vain. Yeah. In commandment number four, you will keep the Sabbath. You have love. That is love. Yeah. You know, we look at the Ten Commandments as something which is negative. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. No, that is not how Ten Commandments should be viewed. Ten Commandments should be viewed as love. You love God and you love your name. So if you love God, you will not break the first four commandments. If you love your neighbor, you will not break the last six commandments. So that is why Christ says, I have left you with only half commandments. Love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And the second commandment is like the first one. Love your neighbor with all as you love yourself. So, love of God covers the first four commandments, and the love for the neighbor covers the next six commandments. So, there are only two commandments. So, when somebody says we have ten commandments, and another one says we have two commandments, yeah. They, understand, they are understanding what they are saying. Yeah. And so, if you enter the line into the kingdom, keep the commandments. It is the fruit of showing that you have been saved. So, salvation is a free gift. Our righteousness are filthy rags. There is no righteousness you can give to God. It is God working in you. And God, can Christ work in you to break the commandments? No. Christ works in us for righteousness. Yeah. And the only way to show that Christ is working in us is to conform to his character. As he obeyed the Father, also we have to obey his word. I, I don't know if you are okay. Any other question? Maybe the last. I don't know because yeah. the one I had, yeah. we have just answered <laughs> now, now. Praise the Lord. And yeah. Yes. About so, the law. Yes. Yeah. That is what I have in the Galatians chapter 2 verse. <coughs> Galatians chapter 2. The last maybe the last of the verses we are reading. Yeah, yeah. 2 verse 20. It says Verse 16. But it's in Galatia. Mm -hmm. What does it say? 
saying about the law? Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by faith of Christ and not by works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. That is verse 16. This is and um, it was talking about the law. Oh, okay. Is that is is it the uh, first until? And the rest of the Jews also prayed the book of the Bible. No. Okay. Yeah. 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 It says that you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. Yes. But you will not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Yes. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. Yes. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself, as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. Yes. And so, this doesn't do away with the commandments. Mm -hmm. Have you understood that? Yeah. It, the commandments are in place, but they are based on love. Mm -hmm. You are do, not doing it to earn salvation, but because Christ is in you. And uh, I, I like to remind you this verse, John chapter 15. Just look at John chapter 15. Verse um, 10. 15, 10. It says, mm -hmm. if you keep my commands, commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. Yes. So Christ is still telling us to keep what? His commandments. Yes. Commandment. Um, and uh, uh, 14, 15. So, if we love Christ, we continue in His commandments. Okay. Fourteen, fifteen. Says, yes. You are my friends. Let us start from twelve. Yes. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. No, you. It is chapter fourteen. You are in chapter fifteen. Fourteen. Chapter fourteen, verse fourteen. 15. 15. Yes. Yeah, it says, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. yes. You can only demonstrate you love God by keeping his commandments. Mm -hmm. The Sabbath being included. You, mm -hmm. you cannot do away with it. And the Sabbath is not any day of the week. The Sabbath is the seventh day. God did not sanctify all days. He sanctified mm -hmm. one day and said, keep it holy. Mm -hmm. And by the way, the commandment of the Sabbath starts to remember. Why do, does it start with remember? Yes. Why does it start with remember? Man can forget about the Sabbath day, which day it is, and say all days are okay. Yeah. And I'm not saying that worshiping in all days, every day is bad. But God has set apart one day where we have to end all our works and come in his presence and assemble and on that day it is the reading of the word of god it is communicating with each other in love in church because as his custom was he went into the church luke chapter 4 verse 16 is it on the sabbath day and he taught the word so you go there to listen to the word for the priest to change the bread from the table to the bread to listen to new revelation and then he says that the sabbath is meant for doing good yes 
And so we we don't have to do anything, but we have to rest in the Lord, go to church, hear the sermon, uh, give thanks to Him, and rest in Him without doing any other work. Let us read the, the Sabbath commandment and pray. What does it say? Exodus chapter 20. Start from verse 8 to verse 11. This is the last verse that we are reading. It's, it's, it's verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it in holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a seventh is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, yes. nor your animals, yes. nor any foreigner residing, 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 residing mm. in your towns. Yes. For in six days mm. the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them. But the, he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. That is it. You have six days to work. Yeah. And, the, and the week starts on Sunday, you know that? Sunday is the first day. Then you have six days until Friday to labor. But when the Sabbath comes, you, your son, your daughter, your maid servant, your man servant, or the stranger in your house has to keep the Sabbath. Don't give them work. If you have your shop closed, it says that let not uh, your cattle or uh, your what you own, like, uh, uh, like people have uh, oxen that plow for the people or people have shops that uh, sell things he says that nor your cattle anything that brings you income has to rest that day anyone in your house has to rest that day on the seventh day so do all your work that you want but on the sabbath come before the lord and rest in it i know it's a challenge but we have to obey the lord you are not going to force you are not going to force your husband or your children to keep the sabbath no, no, no. What can I do now? You start by exam to keep the Sabbath. Prayerful. And the Lord will give you a praise. We can be in a very difficult situation. But if we have faith in God, it says with man it is impossible. But, but with God it is possible. Don't force anyone to keep the Sabbath. God does not force anyone to be a Christian. God is not a God of force. It is a one's choice. Mm -hmm. But the love of God is that you keep His commandments. So, if you hear the truth, you know what you do? You walk in the truth. Mm -hmm. You walk in the truth. And this is what we want to walk in. Mm -hmm. By the grace of God, not by our own effort. Mm -hmm. So you have a challenge. I have a challenge. I may be telling you to keep the Sabbath, yet I'm a liar. Mm -hmm. I may be telling you to stop lying, I'm a mother. And do you know, he says that if you are angry with your brother, you are a mother. Yeah. Have you read that? Yeah. Anyone who is angry and calls his brother or anyone a fool, he's a mother. Yeah. He, he will not be forgiven in this life and in the next life. That is Matthew chapter 5. And so, I, I, I'm not belittling the Sabbath. The Sabbath has to be kept. It's a command that people have forgotten about. The Mama, if you read Daniel 7.25, it says that there is a power that changes the Lord of God. More in the sanctuary, I'll show you. It's things to change the law. From the Sabbath to Sunday and other days and Fridays, people worship. But that's not the word of God. God says that, worship me on which day? The seventh day. And that is what we have. Uh, I pray that the Lord will give us all strength to do that. Amen. Amen. Do you believe God can give you strength? You are a Sabbath keeper and He can give you strength. You are led away, but now you can return by His strength. God is 
through God's grace, not human grace. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, not through my effort. Not through God's strength. God's strength. I think we can pray and go for some preparation. Let us pray. Abba Father in heaven, you love us and uh, you want to be with us and uh, we be in the kingdom of your service. Salvation has been given, free gift through the death of your son. But where is the fruit? The fruit is allowing Christ to do the work of transformation in our lives. So we pray, Heavenly Father, that uh, in this hour when here we are in families that uh, have not got this truth, we who have it, Lord, you may give us strength, you may give us grace, that we may be able to keep your commandments. That, Lord, we may love you and we love our neighbors with all our heart. And so, Lord, prepare us, even as we shall be preaching to others, that our lives may be, be reflected in the life of your son. Thank you so much for these sessions that we have given to us. In Jesus' name, we give thanks. Amen.